Welcome to Mindless Entertainment. My name is Jesse Milestone, and I still have feelings about what Disney has done to Star Wars. And today, we are going to discuss how Disney thinks it's super woke and is promoting such great progressivism in its narrative, but is actually being racist and sexist and homophobic. So let's take a look at what we've gotten from our, our diverse cast in the new films. Now, as it says already, already, with, the, with when your marketing predicates on look at me, look at me, we made a black character, look, we have a black stormtrooper. There's something vaguely exploitative about touting oneself as, oh my God, look at us, look at this person of color we put in this movie. There's, it feels like saying, hey, we're not racist, look, there's my black friend. Like that seems, that kind of seems like what, what you're doing anyway. Um, shouldn't we just be acting like this stuff is normal like it's totally normal that there just be a black character like we don't need to draw our attention to it you know we don't need to be like oh my god look it's so amazing that a black person was able to do this it's not just kind of condescending it's not just kind of assume that it's weird or unusual or 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 not common or standard or accepted for this to be done so what you're doing is you're pandering to people who feel that way so what you're saying is your marketing panders to, it just panders to actual racists uh unless you just gotten caught up with your ridiculous narrative that we're all racist so which you probably did so Anyway, that aside, that's not even where my problems really begin. My problem really begins, let's just take Poe himself, right? Uh, or Finn, sorry, Finn, we'll get to Poe. We'll get, trust me, we'll get to Let's just talk Finn, right? Finn is a stormtrooper who's actually a janitor. He's a janitor. He's the hired help. He's like, how much more tokenizing can you get? You've really just put the token black man in here as the help. Oh, in addition to that, you're, 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 you're falling right into the bumbling Negro stereotype because he doesn't do anything. He's not good at anything. All we see him do in The Force Awakens pretty much is run away and be bad at fighting. Uh, and in The Last Jedi, he runs away and then eventually just follows Rose around, not doing anything at all. The only useful thing he contributes to this movie is knowing how to get on the ship. And that's not like a skill he has. He just was given that knowledge when he was a, a jam, janitor stormtrooper uh, for the Force Awakens, for the first, for the First Order. All right? So that's, I mean, you have, you are making him a tokenized racist stereotype. He is, he is the, the friendly black dude who, who just bumbles around and isn't good at anything. Like, how do you not understand? You, you created a character who's a racist stereotype. Now, by comparison, uh, the black man that we had in the original trilogy runs a city. He runs a goddamn city, and he's really good at a lot of things. He is a nuanced and interesting character who has a lot of talents, who has a lot of feeling, and some flaws as well. Um, that's interesting. And guess what? Original Star Wars wasn't all like, look at us, we put a black man in the movie. They just did it. They just did it because that, by the way, is way more woke than you woke ass bitches claim to be. That's way more forward thinking to just be like, hey, here, imagine this universe. This universe doesn't play by our own rules. So we just have a black guy in charge of a city and no one blinks. And that's okay because we can all accept that. That's the beautiful thing about fantasy is you can do things like that and be like, all right, that, that's, we just accept this and move on now. Um, if you even, even the prequels, right? Your, your main black characters in the prequels, you had the head guard for the princess of, of the queen of Naboo, uh, is a black, a incredibly competent black man, um, as well as, of course, one of the most powerful Jedis on the Jedi Council is a strong, competent black man. So, obviously, uh, Disney, you're just moving backwards. You're taking a step in the wrong direction because you have given us one black character, one, and he is not at all remotely competent. Not, not even a little bit. Uh, so that's interesting. We do, if we want to branch out and look at something like Solo. Uh, no, uh, yeah, Solo, right? Tandy Newton, the first black, main black female character in Star Wars. And what do they do? Black person dies first! Black person dies first! I mean, I, maybe the pilot in that chase, I've only seen this once, so it's uh, possibly the pilot died before she did, but essentially she's just like, first to go. Be like, look at us, we made a black character, and we killed her. Just like you do. That's a, by the way, acknowledged racist stereotype in filmmaking. Black guy dies first. Way to go, Disney. Your only subversive element in it, it was, it was a black woman who died first. You're still being racist. All right, let's look at, let's look at Rogue One, right? Rogue One. Your black guy is just your Malcolm X stereotype. Militant, I'm sick of playing by the rules, gonna fight back, right? Just, and, and once again, you just killed him off right at the beginning of the movie. Because why, why would we have a black character that actually lives and is good at things? Nope. They either have to live and suck at things or they have to die right away because we can't have that. Do you, like, is, is this, am I, cra like, this, am I crazy here? I mean, this is, this is so obvious. This is so obvious and easy to look at and be like, wow, you 
just employed every racist stereotype in creating this character and these characters in your movie. It's it's, it's absurd. Not, and forget about that, right? Let's move on to the women. Let's move on to the sexist element in all of Disney Star Wars right now. Um, you have Rey, who is the least powerful female character because the entirety of her character revolves around needing a man. The whole point of The Force Awakens is how much she needed Han as her surrogate father figure. She just follows this man around the galaxy for the entire first movie. The second movie, she follows Luke around and then ditches Luke for Kylo Ren. And we don't know uh, if she's gotten over that or if she just came back to the Resistance now to puppy dog around behind Finn. Ooh, maybe the whole plot of the next movie will be a love triangle where she and Rose get to fight for his attention. Because what a powerful feminist thing to do, fight for a man's attention. Which is all she did in The Last Jedi. Which was, just, I mean, just absurd, absurdly insulting to say that this is my powerful woman and that's all she does. Uh, whereas Princess Leia, she never fought for no man's attention in the original trilogy. They all fought for hers. Same thing with Amidala. Padme, she's like, I'm running this thing. I'm doing good at this. Oh, look, someone's chasing me around because I'm so amazing and that they're in love with me. Like, that's... That's a little more consistent with some, with powerful women. But I don't, what do I know? Apparently I'm just afraid of powerful women. Thank you, Disney. I'm getting really into like smashing my camera in these videos. It's great. Um, another, another example, right, is, uh, is Admiral Haldo, right? Because we can't have, we cannot have an admiral in the resistance who is a woman without sexualizing or romanticizing her in some way. Anyone else feel like that whole little love thing she had with Leia was completely unnecessary? Mon Mothma never flirted with any of anybody at all, period, right? And that's, once again, ignoring the originals, actually proving how far, how, how, how poor of a job Disney, Disney did by comparing it to the originals. Mon Mothma, female leader, this is 1977, and the leader of this entire warlike rebellion is a woman, is a flipping woman. That's bam! Which, by the way, I love how Disney even retcons that in a, in a sense. Like, she is this powerful, strong military leader. Disney's expanded universe leading up to The Force Awakens, it's Mon Mothma who's like, no, we must demilitarize and get rid of all of our weapons because she's a woman and women can't like fighting. That's crazy. Um, so once again, you're just shitting all over her her legacy by, by giving us these trash-ass leaders in the new movies and literally dismantling her legacy. Oh, this was the military leader who brought us to victory. JK, she really hated war and doesn't like guns like what are you talking about what are you talking about the only weird thing about her character is her really interesting passionate care about bothans but you know aside from that like we don't need to see her sexualized romanticized or softened in any way she's just a leader the fact that she's a woman is not apt important at all in the original trilogy and really shouldn't be in the last jedi either the fact that Haldo's a woman shouldn't even factor and yet it's what the whole thing is about the entire thing is about oh my god look at this woman leader that's not progressive guys that's not equality that's sexism oh my god let's all be amazed and shocked and awed that a woman actually managed to come to this position of power, you sexist motherfuckers. And no, we don't need to see her romanticized or sexualized in any way whatsoever in order for her to be a good goddamn character. Why can't she just be a good military leader the same way Mon Mothma was? Why does her femininity have to factor into the narrative at all? Hint, it doesn't. It doesn't. All right, so more fun racism in Disney uh, is, of course... Uh, diversity corner, one of my favorite elements of The Last Jedi. And it's not just we take the Asian and the black person and send them off on a mission that accomplishes nothing. Uh, no, we, we also, they're sent on the mission by Oscar Isaac, by Poe Dameron, right? Who is a Guatemalan Cuban American. Hmm, he's not really a white guy either, which kind of throws a wrench in that whole point of like the powerful woman putting the white man in his place. Cause now you're not bossing a white man around. You're actually bossing out a person of color. That doesn't look so great for you anymore. Hmm. Uh, so, so we have that, right? We have diversity corner. Now, now let's not, let's not forget that the person they go end up finding and meeting uh, in diversity corner land is Benicio Del Toro, a Puerto Rican American actor. Oh my God. Or it might just be straight Puerto Rican. He might not even be American. I don't know. Uh, so once again, we have all people of color can Conveniently sloughed together. And where do they end up? In prison. We take our three minority characters and we put them in jail. Are you serious? Are you kidding? Did you, did you just not think about the optics of that one whatsoever at all? Because great job. That's, that's pretty much about as racist as you can get. Let's take all of our minority characters, throw them in jail. Think about this shit for a second. Like really think about it. 
Um, and then the last one I want to get to is their homophobia, right? Now we think that, oh my god, Star Wars is so progressive because we have homosexuality. Except that, like, we had this little implied potential bromance between Finn and Poe in the first movie. And some people were like, maybe Poe should be gay or maybe they should be gay for each other. Why not just leave it implied? Why not just continue to have this implied bromance throughout and we never really know or have to resolve it? Because A, it's not important to the story, so who cares? And B, okay, if it's there, now all the progressives are happy because like, oh my god, we think they're gay, hooray. But you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, force it or then unforce it. Because now where did it go? Where did this entire relationship go? Is this, is this Ryan Johnson being homophobic? I mean, like, oh, no, we can't have these male characters be super close to each other. Um, or is that, I mean, really it becomes just a, a, a deeper... A deeper level of 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 uh, homophobia in in this, in essence to be like two men and it's not even homophobia at this point now it's like now it's like it's, it's strengthening it's 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 uh, promoting toxic masculinity to be like we can't have these two strong manly men have this soft sensitive relationship if they're not gay but we can't have them be gay either because we can't you know do that we can't be that progressive but we also can't be progressive enough to eschew traditional notions of masculinity in which men can be soft and emotional with each other which is kind of ridiculous because those are traditional, traditional versions of masculinity. You want to go back to ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient wherever, that bromance is like a very, very key important part of their cultures. Granted, in ancient Greece, they were fucking each other in the butt, but no matter. Not important. The point is, is that the, the appearance and then sudden disappearance of that just shows how uncomfortable Disney really is working within uh, uh, male-on-male relationships, either as something not traditionally masculine or as something that is a little more homoerotic. Either way, they're like, no, we can't do that. That just seems kind of homophobic to me. Now, of course, the biggest point of homophobia is Disney's idea of what being pansexual is. Uh, in Disney's mind, being pansexual means you want to fuck a robot. Sex robots are already a thing. Wanting to have sex with a sex robot does not make you pansexual. It just makes you lonely. So not really sure where you were going with that one, right? Pansexual, for those who aren't aware, means you don't discriminate in your preferences. You fuck whatever you find is hot. Now, if only it were possible to have a masculine, manly man be a true pansexual and have us all really love the character anyway. No, that can't be done. Oh, wait! Jack Harkness and Doctor Who. If you haven't seen Doctor Who, if you haven't seen the episode of Jack Harkness, Jack Harkness is a smarmy, very Han Solo-esque, kind of good-looking, charming, badass dude who is completely and actually pansexual. It doesn't matter if you're human, alien, male, female, if he wants, if he's horny, he will get it on with you. Uh, very much like Captain Kirk, though Kirk only stuck with the female aliens, right? But we have this, we have precedents for a, a, a broader concept of pansexuality applied to masculine, regular masculine men. You didn't have to take Lando, who was never this sort of light dandy kind of creature, and make him into this little pansy asshole in order to just make him want to fuck a female robot. I mean, that's, that's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's so bass backwards and wrong that I don't understand why the entire pansexual community wasn't up in arms about this. I mean, it's kind of bizarre and, and ridiculous. And once again, you have precedence for these characters. These are great characters that we love. Why not lean into one of those? I mean, rather than, again, going as unprogressive as you humanly possibly can, going less progressive than a show that was made in the 60s, uh, less progressive than, than, a, than, than a TV show that, that, that these episodes were at least a decade, or at least a decade old at this point. Um, so, like, what are you actually thinking? I mean, what are you thinking, Disney? You think we're not going to notice? You think you're just going to be like, we're going to use all of our bigoted prejudice stereotypes and everyone will just be fine with it and believe that it's progressivism? Because new progressivism is actually just repackaging old stereotypes and pretending that that's okay now? I mean, what the hell, Disney? What the hell? So, anyway, Disney, racist, sexist, homophobic. Look at, you can, I, you can write, write down below, I'm sure you guys can come up with infinite examples of films that do a better job of representing strong women, of representing confident, powerful black men, and representing different sexual preferences in ways that aren't comical jokes. By all means, flood the comments with your much, much better examples. Maybe eventually Disney will realize that all it's doing is being a bunch of racist, bigoted motherfuckers. And until they realize that and stop trying to inject their false uh, progressivism into fi films, because that's like my huge problem. You're, it's not even that you're putting your progressive narrative into the movie. That's bad enough. But you're doing it so fucking wrong that it's insulting and embarrassing for you. It's insulting for me, and I'm not even one of those uber-progressive whatevers. Like, what? What are you doing, Disney? Get your shit together. Anyway, that's all. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want people to see it, make sure you send it to them. If you want to make sure you always catch my videos, hit that nice subscription uh, bell thing. And we'll talk again soon because, you know, it's always fun to yell about how much Disney sucks.